video, I'm going to show you how to fix a specific issue with both Native Instruments Contact and Reactor. If you ever have the, this patch was generated by a newer version of the application, or this file was saved with a newer version message while using Contact or Reactor in a DAW project, this video is for you. So this is only for Windows users who use VST plugins. Uh, and the DAW I'm going to be using in the video is Cubase, but the general steps apply to any Windows DAW that supports VST plugins. So first let's take a look at the actual problem in action. I'm going to start with contact. So we will open contact here. I'm going to try to load um, one of the more recent instruments about the grandeur. Alright, so there's the first error. This patch was generated by a newer version of the application. I'm going to close out here. And let's check out Reactor. So I'll pop Reactor open and try to open the rounds instrument. And here, error while reading file. Okay, so what's going on here? Um, it's telling me that my applications are out of date. However, I can open up my service center and um, I don't have any updates waiting for me. All my products are activated. So why am I getting errors about uh, my applications being out of date? Well, first off, whenever an instrument designer saves an instrument with either contact or reactor, the version used to save the instrument becomes the minimum version necessary to load that instrument. So if you have an instrument that used to load fine in your DAW projects, but suddenly starts to throw these errors, that can be because a recent update to the instrument introduced a requirement for a newer version of Reactor or Contact. And if you updated the instrument, but you didn't update your applications and plugins, you can see this problem. The most likely reason for this behavior is that you have some outdated copies of the plugin files stored in different directories from the ones where your service center updates are being installed. The service center updates use the directories you specified when you first installed your native instruments products, even if you've moved your plugin files to different folders since you performed the initial install. So I wrote a program called Ultimate Plugin Tool that can identify and fix these problems, and I'm going to show you how to use it right now. So first off, you're going to want to go to ultimateoutsider.com, and once you're there, click Software. And that brings us to our downloads page. And you can see Ultimate Plugin Tool right there. And just click that link and download it. And um, then install the application once the file is downloaded. Okay, I'm going to launch the program now. Now, if you get a user account control dialog box, just click yes. All right. So first off, we're going to use the Find Duplicate VST Plugins option. So I'm just going to do that and click Next. So the first thing we're going to do is choose which kinds of plugins we want to um, look for. Now, uh, for this video, I'm just going to look for my 32-bit plugins. I'm actually running uh, Windows 7 64-bit. So I actually have both 32-bit and 64-bit versions of these files installed. So if you're running 64-bit Windows, the program detects that and it will give you both of these options. If I was running on 32-bit uh, Windows, the 64-bit option would be grayed out. But anyway, we're going to go th with 32-bit. And we can see down below, uh, Ultimate Plugin Tool actually already detected a few commonly used uh, plugin folders for us. Now, for this specific problem where we've got a uh, plugin in our DAW project that isn't uh, loading right, we want to make sure that our DAW doesn't have any additional directories that it searches for plugins that aren't listed here. So let me take a look. I'm going to switch back to Cubase really quick. Check our plugin information, my VST plugin paths. Okay, so I've got these four folders listed here. I think those are already listed in Ultimate Plugin Tool. So I'm actually going to quit Cubase right now. All right, so we're back in Ultimate Plugin Tool, and we can see we have these same directories. They're already listed. If I had an additional directory or two that I wanted to add on the screen, you can just click Add New. You can locate uh, the new folder you want to add. Um, but for now, we can just uh, continue. So I'm going to click Next. 
All right, so this initial search, depending on how many plugins you've got installed in your system and how fast your hard drive is and everything, it might take a minute or two to actually do this scan. Um, in my case, I already ran this scan uh, earlier, so it came up really fast. Okay, so what we can see here is that uh, the program actually detected I had duplicate versions of both Contact and Reactor in my 32-bit plugin folders. By default, when the screen first comes up, it only shows duplicate files. It doesn't show just single instance plugins. And uh, what I can do now is I can take a look at a specific uh, plugin file. I'm going to start with Contact 5 here. When I click the file name over here, we see the specific instances of Contact 5 that um, Ultimate Plugin Tool found on my hard drive. So let's take a look. I've got two different versions. I have one that's dated in 2011, and um, it's version 5.0.1. And then I've got a newer version in my VST Plugins folder here, and that's uh, dated uh, January 2015, and it's 5.4.3. So I've got a significantly outdated version of the plugin on my hard drive, and that's probably the one that Cubase was seeing earlier. So what I can do now that I've uh, detected this uh, duplicate plugin file, um, if I want to get a little bit more info, I can select a specific version. I can select this outdated version, and I can click Browse to, and that will open up the folder where that file was located. You know, and you can right-click and check the properties of these individual files. Or, if I know that this is something I simply don't want on my computer anymore, I can select the file I want it to get rid of, then click Delete. It asks me if, it, if I'm sure. I'll continue. And I can actually do that with uh, all of these older versions I've found. Okay, and we've got some Reactor plugins too. We've got some Looks like I had um, 5.6.1 was the old version of Reactor I had installed. So I'm just going to pluck out those old versions here. All right, so I've deleted all of the duplicates, I believe. So now I'm going to go back and I want to do a rescan, check my work. So I'm going to keep 32-bit plugins selected and click Next. All right, so we've got no files found, meaning no duplicates found. Also down here, we've got the unexpected files section, and it, it does say no files found now. But the purpose of this is um, if you maybe accidentally placed some 64-bit versions of plugins in your 32-bit plugins folders, they would show up here, and that would give you a chance to... Um, to relocate those files because uh, you know sometimes that can cause problems depending on uh, whether your your um, plugin host or your DAW supports uh, plugin bridging. You probably don't want to mix up the two different kinds of plugins. Okay, so we've deleted our duplicate files and we don't have any more duplicates to worry about. Um, but now we can go back and we can check and see if there are any other problems with our currently installed Native Instruments. Uh, products. Uh, you might want to do this after deleting duplicates just to make sure that your products are pointing to the right directories, like the right locations on your hard drive. So I've selected Manage Installed Native Instruments Products. I'm going to click Next. And uh, like with the duplicates, this scan can actually take a couple of minutes depending on how much stuff you've got installed and how fast your computer is. But once uh, the scan's complete, it will populate your product information list. Now to really quickly check for problems. I'm going to um, make sure that all of these options are checked except this one here that says show valid path items. Um, this entry basically means you know products that don't have any problems right now. So I'm going to uncheck that and only display uh, items that do have problems. So that's what this show broken path items option is for. And as it happens all of our products that are currently installed do not seem to have any um, any specific issues. I'm going to turn this option back on so I can see all of my installed products. And let's go down and take a look at um, contact. All right, so um, here's the kind of information that, that we see. Um, so contact 32-bit plugins are stored in this folder right here. 
and Ultimate Plugin Tool actually detected my Contact 5 plugin in that folder, and we found the specific version 5.4.3. Okay, um, if the file was located someplace else, if it wasn't in this folder, this plugin path here would actually show up red, like the letters would be red, and that would indicate to us that Ultimate Plugin Tool couldn't find that file. And that would be an indication that we'd have to, you know, maybe locate the file somewhere else or change the directory. And you can change all of these directories here. And we'll take a look at our reactor information as well. So go down to reactor 5. All right, so again, we don't have any problems. You know, here's the correct plugin path or the correct plugin folder. And here's the correct plugin path and um, you know, all versions of the application and plugin files that it found were the latest version. Now we're going to quit Ultimate Plugin Tool and going to relaunch Cubase and see if our um, fixes did the trick. All right, so we're back in Cubase and now I'm going to try to load one of the problem instruments in Reactor first. So let's show the UI and the grandeur. And hey, so the correct version of contact must be loaded because it's now able to load this um, more recent instrument. So I'm going to close my contact instance here and let's try Reactor and see if that's working now. Oh, and there it is. Instrument loaded just fine. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, the next video in this series about Ultimate Plugin Tool is going to cover some plugin related problems in both machine and complete control. So uh, check us out later. Thanks. Bye.